DIY Spy Dar. I am going to take this replica of a vintage table and turn it into a koi pond fantasy. Welcome to the Charity Challenge 2023. This is being hosted by Angie from the Transcend Furniture Gallery. The rules are like this. Do a big transformation on a piece. You are going to donate it to someone in need or an organization or sell it and donate the proceeds. And it has to be a really big transformation. The plants for my piece is our local uh, county humane society a lot of times when you go to local stores you'll find a little donation jar where people can put their change in there for them and a lot of times they will also go to the local craft and art shows that we have in the area especially around christmas time and i was just thinking maybe they could take this table as a donation and raffle it, then that way they could possibly really make a lot of money for all the pets in need in my area. So that is my plan. Now this piece, all completed, this is a replica of a vintage table. It was from the 90s and when it was all put together it had all all the boards all glued together and then it was run through a lathe so you could see the lines in it so you always have that dilemma if, if it's really a old piece like I have sitting over there which is a mid-century modern uh, radio turntable with all the guts already removed in the back gone um, I'm gonna try to restore it as much as I can or if you see a piece that maybe you have a idea where you want to take it to the level that I did. This is a maximalist piece which I have recently found um, with Lel from Made by Marley and Chris Donna from Bella Renavara. I love them both and they have opened up the whole world of color and fantastic things. I really do love it. Um, as far as restoration, uh, Angie she is the best. Um, she can take pieces and restore them and they look absolutely fabulous. My two other fav favorites are Jay from Flipping Drawers and Barry from Mad City Modern. What did I learn from this piece on this journey? I learned that when using Dixie Shine that it really doesn't completely cover all the way. I have not tried to use it flat yet but um, there was a special little video from Dixie Bell where they did uh, show the use of it and they also explained and showed that it is not going to give you full coverage. If you have areas that are missed, you can go back over with glue and then uh, let it uh, get to its point and then go ahead and put another layer on. So I did put two layers of Dixie Shine uh, on this table and I still didn't get quite that complete solid gold coverage, but that's okay. It kind of goes along with the piece and it looks fine. The other thing I learned is go with my first instinct. I should have sprayed the top instead of trying to brush it because the table has a lip around the outside edge and you just can't get that full stroke and I didn't like the way the top looked so I ended up spraying it anyway and it really did uh, save the top of that piece. So let's get into it and let me show you how I did this. Here is the table. I paid ten dollars for this table at a garage sale and it was in really good shape. There were a lot of fine scratches along the top and there were a couple dings here and there that I did have to repair uh, with some wood filler but all in all shiny shiny when I wash <laughs> I have to take it outside with the hose get me some Dawn power wash give it a spray give it a scrub give it a rinse then set it in the sun to dry really good 
I needed to scuff sand this whole table and I used my surf prep sander with 220 paper and I did put the sponge attachment on uh, for it to give way a little bit, especially going around these moldings and curves and edges so they could keep their shape. The colors that I am going to use in the paint that I chose was Silk All-in-One Paint by Dixie Belle because it has the built-in primer and also has a built-in top coat. So the color I'm going to use on most of the table is Wharf, which is kind of a gray green color. And then the color that I'm going to use on the top of that table is a, a nice white color, also silk, all-in-one mineral paint in white cap. So I am going to get this painted and then we can get on with what I'm going to do with the top. I did get all of my transfers out that I had that featured koi fish. And I ended up using some from Dixie Bell called Balance. And the other small fish I used, I don't remember where I got those from. But get your uh, transfers set up the way you want them. And when you're ready to go, pull that back sheet off, set it down, exactly where you want it because once you set it down it's gonna stick and press it down so it does stick then you're going to take the burnishing stick and go ahead and start rubbing on that transfer so you can transfer it from that sheet to the top of your furniture keep checking it by lifting up gently if you see any part of that transfer um, stay on that sheet, just take and put that sheet back down and continue rubbing on it until everything has been transferred. My transfers are all on. I have my stamps. These stamps are called Seashore by IOD and all my transfers are on really, really good. So the next portion of this is we are going to stamp. And these are brand new stamps. So what you really need to do is take some 220 sandpaper and gently scuff them, rub them a couple different directions. And this is the only time that you have to do this. Uh, just initially when you first open the package. You want to give them a little tooth. Stays on ink in black. I really like the stays on because it does really stay on. Um, take your stamp and I put it on a little piece of clear plastic and I'm going to take that pad with the ink in it and I am going to start to gently tap and load up this stamp with the black ink and then we're going to place it on the surface. Uh, these stamps have a lot of 3D detail in them. There's a lot of black, there's a lot of lines, which is okay. Uh, there's, uh, it just uh, makes it look a little more 3D for you. When, when you're gonna take your stamp, try to get it by the corners, don't touch it, set it where you want it. Once it's there, don't move it. Always keep one hand in contact with that stamp and then press down every portion of that stamp that you can all over the top to transfer that ink. There we go, one down, bunch more to go. Here is the big conch shell. I think that's how you say it, Con conch. Um, this one has a lot of lines and detail on it as well as you can see. 
all this lining starts to give it some of its own 3D effect with the blackness in the lines. And there you have it. Um, you can see all the lines. I've got all of my images stamped on. All my transfers are in place. So the next move is going to be freehanding rocks. Get a pencil, get comfortable, get some tea, get some music playing, and you're just going to draw round, oval, squarish, whatever you're in the mood for. Just draw some rocks. I'm starting in the middle with my smallest rocks there, and I'm gonna graduate to larger ones out to the edge, because that way it's gonna give me more of that depth that I'm looking for. Larger up at the top, tapering way down to the bottom where them rocks look really small. There is a way to help yourself uh, keep them even, is just draw some randomly, going right up to that very edge, and then at the very end, make your biggest one. And then that will help you gear the size in between all of them. Keep on a going, ain't quite there yet. There we got it. The next thing is going to be to base in each individual rock. I am using the color wharf to keep it with the table. Now, usually what I do is I'll, I'll pick four or five different colors and I'll make all the rocks different colors. And that really adds more interest if you're just looking at rocks. I kind of wanted to tone it down a bit and see if I could just go with the black and the white because I knew it was going to be quite uh, loud with um, the transfers and the painted shells. But just go ahead and you're going to um, take that color and color in on each individual rock. Since I have all the rocks based in, I am going to go ahead and paint my shells next. And I just used regular artist's brand um, acrylic paint and extremely watered down at points, almost like a watercolor. And I just went in and painted along the lines, in between the lines, just put it over the top because this stays on ink, doesn't come off. As you can see, all the black lines are still there and I didn't stamp over the top of them. I simply did a stamp and paint instead of a stamp paint stamp. Do you see those five rocks kind of there on the right hand side in the middle? They're starting to pop up off that table. I've added the low lights and that's what we're going to do to each rock next. Each rock next. Black paint, watered down, go around the outside edge, stipple, um, dot, make a circle, swirl. Whatever you, you're comfortable doing, just give a little darkness around the outside of the entire rock. Now do you see at the bottom, the white that's really making it pop again? We need to put our highlights in and I'm using white. 
titanium white. Same thing. Pounce it on. Dab it on. Use your finger to take some off. Swirl it. Stipple it. However that rock looks like it might want to look. Put those highlights on it. This is not really hard painting. As you can see up close, there's, there's really not a rhyme or reason. Put your low lights and your highlights, and there's only two more steps left to these rocks. All right, do you see in the middle where underneath them rocks, it is all black. You need to go back with black and go in between every single little rock and give it that earth underneath it. Because before we didn't have that, that's gonna start pulling it together. I wasn't gonna do color, but I didn't like the way it looked, so I did just a little bit. So I have about four or five colors, and I'm gonna go back and just give it a tad of color here and there. And when you do the top part, the same thing, I'm using black here. I'm just doing some lines, some squiggles, some dots. Uh, if it comes out too dark, just take your finger and tap on it. And then you can see how that lightens it up. And it also gives it a really cool look too. Here I'm coming in with some color and just a little bit, put it off to one side on the top, wherever you want to dab, just a little bit of color on there. And I kind of skip around to different stones. Like I said, I'm, I, I didn't do all of them, but I did a few to give it some more interest. Stick With Me Glue from Dixie Bell along with the Dixie Shine in Gold. I wanted the balls that these claws were hanging on to bright gold. So you paint on the glue, you let it sit for 15 minutes, it should be clear. Then you take your paper and you put the paper on there and I've got a little soft plastic brush and I rub it in and I did use a sponge as well to get this in there and when you pull the paper off the gold will stay on there and you don't have all them little flicks flying all over. I kind of like this stuff. I mixed some black wax with some easy peasy wax and made it really really kind of thin and watery and I just kind of used my finger in a rag just to kind of highlight the foot to give it a little bit more of a 3D effect. I also used straight black wax down in the concave areas with the design um, on the legs and also up the middle column 
wipe that off. And a part that I didn't record, I forgot to hit record, was uh, putting gilding wax on the raised areas. Okay, now we're to the outside edge. And I am painting on the stick with me glue. And that's about how I, I put it on. You don't want it like real, real heavy, but you don't want it too thin either. Wait 15 minutes, put your sheet on and find something good to rub it with. This is just a really soft plastic brush, almost like a toothbrush, I'd say. Closing in on completion. <clears throat> now, I had a few problems with this. Um, you can see that the outside edge, if you really wanted to take your brush and go back and forth, you, re you really can't because that raised edge stops your, your stroke. So I did use a blue sponge even and tried to go like in a circular motion, but I still was not liking it. Uh, a lot of uh, brush strokes were showing. It didn't look very good. I put four coats of polycrylic gloss on here. And in between each one, I sanded. I started with 300 grit, 400 grit, 600 grit. And then my last one before I did this was a 60 micron micro uh, finishing sandpaper. So. It's pretty smooth now. Um, I hopefully didn't damage any of the design. It looks pretty good. I don't see any issues. Um, I actually like how this edge does go around because it kind of reminds me of waves. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to spray this now with my uh, sprayer. And um, then possibly I'm gonna go back in and put a little bit of dark wax in there because this so much does remind me of waves coming down to the edge and then I'm going to finish this top and kind of blend it on down with um, some gold, gold gilding wax and then this should be completed so fingers crossed I can spray this without any problems and I get what I want and it doesn't rain and the bugs don't land in it we'll be good to go this is my sprayer, the Finish Max Super by Homerite. It's seven years old. I always spray on something before I go to my piece, just to make sure it's how I want it and it's working properly. Here's that table when I started. Remember it?
I want to thank Angie for hosting this really fun challenge. And everybody, look in my description and you are going to find a playlist of everybody that participated. And it should be really neat. And if you made it this long with me, I want to thank you very, very much. Please like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.